So. So, where are you headed? Hmm. Not the talkative type, eh? That's okay. Most people I pick up are just waiting for their turn to talk. Want a raisin? They're from my farm. Sure. California still farms more raisins than anywhere on Earth. Yep, that's right. Some people don't have the slightest idea. Sure you don't want one? Thompson seedless. Good raisins. You want to know the clearest evidence that reality isn't real? Raisins and grapes, man. They're the same thing, but they taste disgusting when eaten together. Obvious bug in the program there, right? Memory is a slippery thing. Think about when somebody asks you about this ride later. Assuming you even know where you're going. And get someplace where somebody can ask you. Hey, how'd you get here anyway? They'll ask you. Oh, I hitched. And your brain will flash back for a second when you say this. And it'll show you a frozen snapshot of yourself. Sitting in this car, talking to me, like we are right now. But which moment will it actually show you? Will it be this one? Or this one? Or this one? We think we remember how people really were. How our lives together really were. But when we think back to them, even the people we cared about the most, all we're doing is snatching moments out of the air. Just grabbing another raisin out of the box. I've spent a lot of time around raisins. They're like those dogs you see with wrinkles of skin falling over their eyes. Not the most handsome dogs. Basically helpless, but lovable. My wife... She preferred grapes the way most people do. She's dead now, but you probably guessed that. Oh, thanks, but you don't look like you're doing so well yourself. Takes one to know one, right? I can always spot someone who's grieving along this highway. They usually stand on the road with a dazed look on their face and their thumb up in the air. No, I don't know you. Just know the type. My wife? If I'm totally honest with you, I don't really remember what she looked like. Remember everything about her. Just not her face. Some people have faces that are easy to remember. <laughs> Doesn't seem fair. Well, it's not as easy as you think. I'll give you an example. You think you're present in the moment? You've been talking to me for a few minutes now. What color are my eyes? Nope. Well, like I said when I picked you up, some people are just waiting until it's their turn to talk. 
Hey, kid. Do me a favor and crack the window, would you? That's better. Now, where were we? Yeah, fair number. But after a while, you start seeing the same few archetypes over and over. You got the numbnuts Kerouac fans. You got your autodidact blowhards. They'll talk your ears off. You got a lot of people from Cincinnati for some reason. You got your deadheads trying to get to some concert someplace. And then there's the water bottle person, always worrying that they're going to run out of water before they get where they're going. Still, <laughs> you're the first hitcher I ever picked up who doesn't have a destination. Copernicus. Well, it seems like the right name for a guy who's traveling the world without knowing where he's going. You just sit back, Copernicus, and invent a language where false statements are impossible. What? Oh, I stand corrected. You know, when I was a kid, my brother and I used to drive our parents crazy on long drives like this. Our folks wouldn't let us listen to the radio in the car. So we used to make up these songs about food on long drives to pass the time. We had this one with about 30 verses, each about a different kind of grain. There was this one time when we passed a billboard for this new kind of bread. Balach bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. Oh, oh yeah, that drove mom and dad crazy. Come on, join in. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. Actually, I'm beginning to understand my parents' perspective. Getting older is funny. It's like reading a book where less and less happens, but the writing gets better and better. Thanks. I got it from an app. It's this app with philosophical sayings. My wife got it for me, to make me sound smarter. Oh, she had a way with words. Yeah, well, that all sort of depends on which raisin you take out of the box, right? How you spin it. We were married for 37 years. People used to ask us how we managed, being married and all, working off the side of the road together, sharing a little trailer. The truth is, nobody knows if they're happily married. All they know is that it's the thing they've been doing every day for the last 37 years. It's not that simple, Copernicus. Life has a way of chipping away at that certainty. It'd be easier if you had a number assigned to you, a number from one to a hundred, printed on both your foreheads where you could always see it. You would arrive in the mail every year, right after you file taxes. Oh, we're a 71. That couple down the street, the Rosens, they're an 82 this year. Oh, I guess they have it a bit better than us. Some way of knowing. Hmm. There's a photo in that glove box there of us standing in front of our trailer. It was in a magazine. One of those stories about vanishing farmers that always pulls heartstrings with the rest of the country. Well, I never opened the glove box myself. It's kind of a 
Super superstition of mine. But help yourself. Hey, where'd you get that? That's not her. And that guy there, he looks like you. I don't know. I was gonna ask you the same question, Copernicus. Did he... Who gave this to you? Well, I guess it belongs to you. You'd better hold on to it. What woman? Well, oh, her. Well, hard to say. wouldn't lose any sleep over it. What's that black thing in the glove box anyway? What you got there? That's my number. I used to leave those all over my car in case my car got lost and somebody found it. But yeah, feel free to call me anytime you get in trouble. So, where were we? See anything interesting there? A windmill, eh? No idea. Say, want to hear a joke? Why did the raisin take the prune to the dance? He couldn't get a date. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. It's almost 4.30. You'll like this. It's my favorite. I once knew the hostess, Darlene. She used to change the tires on my truck on Highway 51. Welcome to another interstate riddle hour. Here's our first riddle. Keep your eyes peeled, all you blacktop carpetbaggers. I fly, yet I have no wings. I cry, yet I have no eyes. Darkness follows me. Lower light I never see. Forever bound. He opens and shuts with a similar sound.
need some help? The answer is right between your feet. Very good. I don't know why I listen to this every day. Damn questions are rigged. I never get them. Says the guy who never knew what pressure to keep his tires out. Hey! Having fun? Want to keep going? Okay, let's go to our final riddle then. He lies without touching the ground. Oh, come on, Darlene. Damn it, Darlene. I should have tipped her better when she changed the tires. She's been out to get me ever since. Look, she isn't being straight with you, kid. Check the photo, Copernicus. The photo in your bag. Then you'll see. Uh. She's in trouble, Copernicus. You must help her. Ah, uh, things like that happen all the time on this highway. It's nothing to lose your scrunchie over. Kid, I am sorry about your girlfriend. But I had nothing to do with it. It's just the opposite. I was sent to protect you. From yourself. You picked this car every bit as much as I chose to stop for you. You picked this car, picked me, not to feel anything. Let's not kid ourselves. You don't seem like a guy who wants to remember. Kid, just let it go. There's nothing for you down that road. Nothing but hurt. Look, I admit I lied, but only about one thing. Now, why would anybody bother to lie about that? Yeah, we've met. Twice, in fact. Sure. You showed up at my trailer park taking photos. At first, I was a bit suspicious, since there were plans to kick us out and develop the trailer park into some kind of shopping center. But then it became clear that you'd been sent here by a magazine to do one of those stories about vanishing farmers that always pulls heartstrings with the rest of the country. Kid, I told you, you don't want to go down that road. Well, there's one more lie I told you. We're not number one anymore in raisin production. We were surpassed last year by Turkey. I wasn't afraid of the truth either, back then. My wife, when she got the x-rays, when she knew, she decided to spare my feelings, didn't tell me anything. Hid the x-rays in one place I'd never suspect, because it was so obvious. It stayed closed until today, until you came along. And that's what you liked about me when we met, when you came to take those photos. You said you admired my fortitude. I had to look up at least one of those words in the dictionary. Turns out that you just meant my not feeling every little thing that's gone wrong with me. Well, that's life as a raisin farmer. We're not known for live casting our power ballots. Each raisin 
is a little setback that you've learned to live with. You don't dwell on it or try too hard to remember. I wish it was that simple, kid. Hey, Chief. Why don't you have a look here? He appeared on this highway about the same time you did. I guess he's part of what you're running from. Not sure. You can't see him directly. He only shows up in mirrors, windows, pictures. Well, we haven't talked yet about the second time we met. That's the thing. It's a little hard to explain. Better if I just take you there. It's just a quick detour. We'll be there in a minute. But close the window. You don't want to have it open where we're headed. But close the window. You don't want to have it open where we're headed. A man travels along a road until he reaches a gate at the top of a hill. The road has been long and straight so far, and the going has been easy. But now the man can't go any further, so he takes a seat by the road to rest. The man waits, and after a length of time that seems neither short nor long, the gate opens and a guard appears. The man asks the guard for entry, but the guard says he cannot let him enter at the moment. The man thinks for a second and asks if he will be allowed through later. It is possible, says the guard, but not now. The gate now stands slightly open and the man tries to look through it longingly. His journey has been easy so far, and he misses the feeling of the open road. The guard notices and laughs. Even if you could gain entry, there are many gatekeepers after me. Some are much stronger than me, and I'm afraid to look upon them. So there the man waits for days, months, Years, waiting to enter. One day, when he's given up hope of entering, a single question occurs to him, one he has not thought of before. Why, he wonders aloud, are there no other travelers along this road? All these years, no one but myself has waited in front of this gate. The answer to this question comes from a voice near his shoulder. It is you who made this gate, says a bird perched nearby. So it exists for no one but you. But why? asks the traveler. Why would I choose to stop here? The bird answers, after hungrily eating a crust of bread from the man's hand. After this point, the road becomes less straight. It splinters 
like the tree in which I live, splitting into dozens, hundreds of branches. The path becomes impossibly narrow and frail, and crowded with the view of other paths one could have taken. There's only one point ahead on the road where all paths converge, where all points join, where the light shines through skin and through lies. But it's never been reached by one of your kind, a traveler who walks on feet. Shoo, cries the guard, chasing the bird away. Don't listen to his nonsense. Having said this, he takes a seat next to the traveler, but not before closing the gate forever. So when you think about it, who knows how long we've been sitting here, just like this, on this road. Take it from me. It's better to face things with What's it called again? Fortitude. Better not to feel too much. <clears throat> Want a raisin? See? You're getting used to it. Life is like a box of raisins. That's some forest gump type wisdom for you right there. Here, I'll leave the box open for you. Help yourself. Look, hooded crows all along this road. I have to chase these for my farm every harvest. They look hungry. Didn't get much peck out of this last harvest. Look, hooded crows all along this road. I have to chase these for my farm every harvest. You don't want to do that, kid. These birds are unpredictable. There's no telling what they'll do once they start swarming. Get enough of these crows together and it's big trouble. You're making a mistake, kid. You don't know where they're taking you. Look, I'll help you. I'll help you figure out what happened when she came back from Europe. Great. Who? We'll get to that in a sec. Let me ask you something first. Did she pack an umbrella with her on her trip to Europe? Traveler's checks or cash? If I am, it's for your own good. Wanna hear a joke? Why did the raisin take the prune to the dance? It's great though, right? Get this. He couldn't get a date. You know, when I was a kid, 
My brother and I used to drive our parents crazy on long drives like this. I've told you hundreds of times. You just don't remember. Well, I'll tell it again. We've got plenty of time to kill, right? Come on, you like this one. Yep. <laughs> Good one, right? We're starting to see the same scenery over and over again. Have you noticed? What? Want to hear a joke? Now you've done it. They've taken control of the car. I don't know, Copernicus. Why don't you ask them? Oh. We're at my farm, Copernicus. I had a funny feeling. The moment you looked through those binoculars. Well, they're pulling us around in circles. They're afraid of the scarecrows I put up here last summer. They want to take us, take you, I suppose, to that windmill in the middle. You need to rotate the scarecrows. See if you can find something in this car that might do the trick. That's it, kid. Now, more of the same. Almost there. That's it, kid. I... I think it's for you. They have a way of leaving gifts once you've fed them. Often something shiny or a piece of string. I'm going away for two months. I'll be back before you know it. It's practically a cliche. Going to Europe to have new experiences and yeah, it's corny. But maybe find myself. I guess I'm just worried that you'll find yourself but lose me along the way. I'll be back before you know it. Promise. Here's a security deposit. What a weird box. Did you win this at the circus? It's great, right? I'll send you something special from Europe to put inside, so you know I'm thinking of you. And then we have our road trip together when I get back. You won't miss me anyway. You have plenty to keep you busy. Like that job in California. The story about the... The vanishing grape farmers. You're right. I'm worrying too much. I love it. Does it lock? In some other world, it must, but not here. Okay, trade you a memory box for your Polaroid. Say cheese. Well, 
Now that you know how it started, it doesn't make the next step any easier, does it? Listen, I disapprove of just about every choice you've made on this trip. But I like you, kid, and I can see you've made up your mind. If you want to find your girlfriend, if you want to find out what happened, if you really want to go there, you've got to find that box. I don't know, kid. But find that box and the key. Open the box before it's too late. Well, this is where I say goodbye. Unless you want to help transport four bushels across... Nah. Just remember, there are many more gates ahead and many more guards. I'm pretty much... Pretty much the friendly drunken uncle of the bunch. Well, good luck to you, kid. Oh, one more thing. What did the grape say when he got run over by the car? Nothing. He just gave a little whine. <laughs> good luck with your search.